Hello, I'm Robert Schulte, and this is Light Meter, a podcast discussing the ideas and theories behind why pictures are the way they are. Today, I'm going to be talking with Daniel Garcia, a San Jose, California-based photographer and the founder of Content Magazine, a local publication that focuses on creative communities around the South Bay area. So how are you today, Daniel? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I am great. Just kind of sticking around the house at the moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mainly know you through Content Magazine and some local art scene stuff. So how did you start out in photography, like before content, before the art scene, uh, you know, maybe even before you got here? Yeah, sure, yeah. So the first exposure really that I ever had to photography was in between my junior and senior year. Um, I was going to be on yearbook my senior year as a photographer, and I had never really even picked up a camera. So they had kind of like a summer come in and learn how to use the camera, go into the dark room, do all that kind of stuff. And immediately, I just fell in love with it. So I did yearbook for the year, really enjoyed it. And then I went away to Chico to go to school just to kind of play soccer and, you know, get out of the area. And I hadn't really thought about doing photography other than just kind of like a hobby. Um, but when I was there, but when I was there, I really got a passion for it. And I pretty much started blowing off all the classes and just going to the library and looking at um, past, like, photographers from, like, Alf, Alfred Stilgertz and, you know, um, just kind of like the famous guys and looking at Aperture Magazine. And then, so then I transferred to, back down to um, the Academy of Art, and that's really kind of when I started to think of photography as a career. When did you graduate the Academy of Art? So, yeah, actually, it's a good question because I didn't graduate. What happened was probably like my second year, I took a fashion photography class, a studio fashion class, and um, I had like 10 photos, and then I went into this model agency, seeing if they wanted it, they needed any photographers to shoot, and um, the photographer that was kind of like their staff photographer at that particular time was fired the day before, and so I came in. And the agency lady said, hey, you're young, you seem nice, you seem like you got talent, why don't you start tomorrow and work with us? And so I started shooting, um, it was kind of like, that particular one was kind of like a model agency slash slash school. So um, I started the next day and I shot probably anywhere between 40 to 80 people head headshots, like out of the gate, I was making good money, and so I kind of dropped out of school, hmm. which I really regretted actually. Oh, really? Wow. What year was that? Oh, man. Let's see. What <laughs> Long time ago. This has got to be like 84, 85, 1985. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm an old guy. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, and I would shoot all the film myself and process it in my dark room and print it all up. And, you know, it was a lot of fun. Hmm. Yeah, I actually graduated the Academy of Art. Uh, I went there myself. Uh, I graduated in 2016. Uh, 2013 and yeah, uh, cool. yeah it's kind of funny I feel like I, I knew that in the back of my head about you but I was reminded of that just now <laughs> yeah we might have like when we were at a party or something like we might have been talking about photo experiences yeah we got a yeah, lot and so... I actually do regret I do regret dropping out because what I found and what I find kind of like in life is that it's not even so much like the education but it's the networks that you make mm -hmm. and I think by me just kind of dropping out I kind of missed out on some of like the other networks where people that I had seen uh, in school had gone on to do um, like other types of more commercial work um, and I think I could have been a part of that because mm -hmm. even like right when I had stopped going they started to put together like this interdisciplinary kind of advertising agency for the school and I was like the photographer that was chosen to help uh, be a part of that you know so it was going to be like designers and everything but I was working, and I was young, and I was cocky, and I was like, ah, I don't need to go. I can, I'm making money, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, what was the world of photography like when you got into it uh, professionally? Like, when you started doing the, the modeling agency stuff, were you doing uh, other stuff on the side, like magazine work or anything like that? So I pretty much, you know, my goal was to be um, a fashion photographer. I first took a, I took a couple of photojournalism courses classes and I really didn't like it because I just didn't feel right of like going into where people were dealing with a lot of trauma and emotion and taking pictures. I really felt like I was exploiting that. Mm -hmm. And I felt like fashion was, there was very much an upfront kind of like agreement, like, hey, we're going to make this idea. You know, it's, it's like making a movie. It's like an art project. Like, we're going to do this. We're going to try to convey this. We're going to work together. So that was more of my kind of thing. 
So I went to do fashion photography. And so back in those days, they had what they called was test photographers. Mm-hmm. And so basically, you were able to shoot model portfolios and kind of work on their book, and you got paid for it. So um, that's pretty much what I did. But then that also gave you the inroads into the agencies, and then also like uh, clothing designers would ask the agencies for photographers. You would meet other people. You do editorials for some magazines. So I kind of did all that, anything mm-hmm. from like a lookbook for designers to magazine editorials. And but the majority of the work was coming through doing model portfolio or um, test shots. Paid pretty good too. Wow, I remember uh, lookbooks. I, I never did a lot of fashion stuff, but I know that uh, lookbooks were quite a thing in the the late '90s, early 2000s, and they kind of just fell off the map. Do you think that's a result of digital taking over, or? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I still think a lot of designers do. Um, you know, every season they kind of come out with a lookbook and do that. But, you know, the industry has changed a lot in that, you know, a designer can even have somebody put on the clothes in their own showroom, put it up on Instagram, mm-hmm. and tag it and sell it directly. So you don't even necessarily need to go through the whole process of putting together an actual printed book or um, anything like that. And there's a lot of digital tools. So, mm-hmm. you know, the biggest thing that has changed in the industry is the technology, right? Right. And I think in some ways, well, you know, like I, I was making good money primarily doing test photography. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, I'm not even sure if that even exists. I don't think that there's really photographers getting paid to work on model portfolios. Yeah, it's so saturated, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, when you were doing it also, and the other kind of difference here is aside from the the lookbooks kind of disappearing sort of is that uh, people aren't shooting film anymore. And I think that was a huge part of it because you didn't have the instant gratification of looking at the images right away. You had to develop them, process them, print them. Uh, Do you, do you today still shoot film at all? Yeah. You know, I pretty much, yeah. I mean, I I do love film. Um, I usually like, I have an old Polaroid um, that I shoot sometimes. Um, But for, the most part, I was shooting four by fives and medium format. I was a Pentax six seven guy. I love that mm-hmm. format. I still have oh, yeah. those, but all my cameras have kind of broken over the years. But I need mm-hmm. to send them to the shop, and I just don't like shooting uh, thirty five millimeter film. Um, it just doesn't have the resolution and the quality for me. I don't really shoot film that much until, until I get my Pentaxes fixed. I'm probably not going to shoot it. Um, mm-hmm. Other than my Polaroid. Yeah, I just never thought the 35 millimeter had the quality like medium format did in film. It's just beautiful. I mean, it, you know, if you shoot, if I shoot something on my Pentax, just like a Tri-X shot on a mm-hmm. Pentax, it is so beautiful. Yeah. Um, and I just can't stomach shooting film on 35 millimeter. Um, <laughs> and also digital is incredible. I mean, it's kind of funny, all those old guys that were had, were originally shooting in film. I mean, I was there was no digital back in the day, and that's how I shot film. We kind of love digital, I think, even more than other people because the latitude that you have, the the way that you could shoot in such low lighting situations, all that kind of stuff was impossible. And we had to bring. I used to lug around so much gear. You'd have to manipulate the scene so much to get it all to work out. Nowadays, there's way more freedom. Even actually, it was funny. I was going to do this one shoot for an interview with the magazine, and so I brought my four by five out. And as I was setting up my tripod, I saw. I saw like 50 different shots I could have done. And so I shot a couple with the 4x5. I think I shot like three frames, three sheets. And then I got my digital um, SLR out. And then I shot like all this other great stuff. And just the freedom of that was is kind of fun. So I don't shoot film as much. And I kind of like digital. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mostly shoot film for, for fun on the side. I, I know I've shot a couple rolls of film for content before. Uh, but for the most part, it's just... it. It's too slow these days. I don't see a real, I mean, I think, I don't see a great advantage to it, especially if, yeah. you know, I, it cracks me up. I see people are shooting film, I only shoot film, and then what do you do with that film? You take it, you scan it, you basically digitize it, Yeah. right? Exactly. So unless you're actually going to uh, print from the negative or from the slide or something like that to your final product, you're introducing the digital aspect in there. And so for me, it's like, especially for a magazine where it's, it's kind of temporary art. Uh, it's like, you know, shoot digital, you know, and it's, and it's always been, it hasn't, it's never been about like film or digital. It's about 
the emotion, the quality, the lighting, the mood, the composition. Those are the real things, yeah. not what format. Exactly. All right. Well, um, so since you're you're running Content Magazine, you've been running content for, for how long? Yes, yeah, since we launched our print version in 2012. So like whatever that is, eight, eight years. Eight years, wow. Uh, what's it like yeah. running a magazine today, especially in the Bay Area, which is, you know, the tech capital of the country, of the world? <laughs> well, I mean, it's great. I mean, it, you know, writing is great because it, we're all about people and meeting people and connecting people into the into the art scene. And I started the magazine because when I was in San Jose as a photographer, everybody wanted a San Francisco photographer. And then when I was in San Francisco, everybody wanted a European or a New York photographer. And so when I moved back to San Jose... I really wanted to try to do something to build kind of like a community here. So running the magazine as part of more of a community project than necessarily like a publishing project is great. The publishing side of the course is difficult because we're doing print is very expensive, you know, mm -hmm. so that part of it is hard, but the, uh, everything else, I mean, that's the budget is the difficult part. Yeah. Everything else is fun and wonderful and great. You know, focusing just on the South Bay does have a little bit of difficulty and nuances because, you know, there's not maybe as much people that expect too much from the South Bay. There's not maybe as much funding that goes into the arts down here. Right. Uh, even, you know, it's, it's a smaller market. And then so for me, intentionally and purposely not focusing on people outside of Santa Clara County and not allowing people to participate that are outside of San Clara County. It does kind of limit kind of like, I think, the scope and the appeal even for the rest of the world. So, you know, I think that's more of the difficulty. The rest of it is fun. I mean, I get to meet great people. I get to connect people to artists and have artists, you know, writers and photographers go out and connect with people. And that part, it's just that's the best. How how is being a photographer influenced or been helpful with running content? Yeah, I mean, the magazine pretty much started mainly because I wanted to uh, focus on people as a photographer, as a portrait photographer. So that's really like the feel of it. We're a profiles magazine. So everything kind of is focused on uh, the people. So it's influenced it a lot. And I love, you know, the images. I mean, when I started getting into photography, like I said, I'd go to the library and just look at photos all the time. So, you know, we're, we're, I try to be heavy on the portrait and then demonstrate what the artist, what their work is, and then definitely try to tell the story so that people will meet that person. That's kind of like the the focus. So I think it influences a lot of the shape of what the magazine is. Okay, so what are you what are you looking for when you assign photography, and what's your your process of finding a photographer, like and matching them with a specific assignment? So I mean, the main thing that I'm looking for is you know a portrait. I I want. I'm looking for a photography that has technically done well and then aesthetically done well that kind of tells a story or captures something about the person or at least gives the viewer some sort of impression, even if it's not really who that person is, you know, um, but just attract it. Because the idea is that you use, use the visuals to get people to read and so that they get to know that person. So I look for something like that. And then, you know, uh, part of the assignment is to try to get some details of that artist's work or their space as well, right? But I don't really, I don't really solicit or look for photographers, and that you know, and I actually I see a lot of photographers and, and stuff like that, just you know, because I'm an Instagram troller. My kind of philosophy is that if is that people have to want to be a part of it in order to do it. The people that I've solicited before have kind of had a little bit of an interest, but not. I don't think like the right kind of profile that says, like, I want to be a part of this. And since we're a nonprofit arts organization, I don't have a huge budget. So, you know, I'm looking for people who have an interest and I'm looking for people who have a little bit of a hunger. I have a people who care about the community and want to be involved even more than, you know, just trying to build their career. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, though, I would say that I always try to find photographers that being a part of the magazine will help their career. And I try to assign people and photographers and writers to stories that I feel will be good connections for them that will advance their career and will uh, give them a network of people they might not have known before. 
So I always try to think of that. I don't really go out and solicit photographers to be a part. Um, if someone wants to be involved, uh, they can contact me and, you know, we'd go from there. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've met a number of the photographers that shoot for content. And, and, you know, some of them are more seasoned and some of them are, you know, more green. And uh, it's, it yeah. runs the whole gamut. Like you have of a huge uh, line of experience uh, involved in this, in content. It's great. Yeah. I mean, I like to do, I mean, I want to give people for the, for the young photographer or the, you're not necessarily young, but the new photographer who really wants to get their career going and do stuff, man, I'm, I'm, I'm here to help you for the seasoned photographer who really wants to be involved in a project like this, then I'm here for you, you know, but I'm not, I've just found that if I run out and try to get photographers either, you know, they're going to, they're going to think that they're, too good and want to get paid some ridiculous thing that's not even real within the entire <laughs> magazine industry, and then especially for a local publication. Um, and then, you know, they don't necessarily have the, you know, turn it in on time. And so there's a lot of different things like that. You know, it's still a production. It's still a magazine. So I need people who are going to be solid, faithful, determined, and that I can send out on a project too that are going to represent not only the content brand and SV Creates, but also just want to build the community. And I think that is key, that this is this is a community project, not a publishing project. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely get that impression uh, from the get-go. I got that impression. It's, it's a good thing. Uh, does it ever seem uh, burdensome or like you're putting someone out for giving them like a tough assignment? Is it like a, or, or is it like a, a weight off of your chest that, that, you aren't having to do this one project? Because I know you shoot a lot for the magazine as well. Yeah. Do you ever feel like there's this really difficult assignment that maybe someone else's eyes would be better to to handle it than yours? Yeah, yeah, there's all those kind of things. I mean, I always feel bad sending out somebody on something um, like, you know, hey, you know, can you, can you do this? And, you know, we do pay, we don't pay a lot, but so I always feel bad about that. So there's that part of it. The other part is too, is I also am struggling because I, I want to meet all these people, right? So when I send someone out to do an assignment, I'm like, oh man, I really want to, that's more the burden I feel is like, oh, I really want to do it because I want to meet them, you know? Right. And then I usually get jealous, like the people send back the film and are, you know, send back the images and, you know, and I'm like, oh man. And then I meet them at the pickup party. And I was like, oh, I really wish I would have shot that. So that's more of the burden is actually trying to release the kind of like the control and the, my desire to want to meet the people. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't feel a burden of like, a, as far as I think for, I don't think I send anybody out on a hard assignment or anything like that. I feel like if there's somebody difficult, I usually try to take those myself. I think photography for magazines and portraits and stuff, you need to be able to think on your feet, get out there and create something with nothing. I mean, we used to do this one thing called the photo challenge and we would have a model, a makeup artist and a photographer come and they would show up. We would put the all the names in the hats and the, the different models and the different photographers would match up just knowing each other at that particular time and then have to go out and shoot and then send the film back in like, you know, 12 hours. Mm -hmm. And a lot of photographers were freaking out over it, like, oh my gosh, you know, I got to plan all this kind of stuff. And for me, it was like, I loved it because it's like, you should be able to just have a camera and a person and create a good image mm -hmm. with, with just that. Like, you don't even need a light. I mean, figure it out. And I like that challenge. And so I'm excited to give photographers that opportunity to go and to play and to grow and stretch themselves. It's almost like a reportage, like the, the type of the, the way that the, that you're talking about that stuff being assigned. It's almost like it's very spur of the moment. Uh, and that's and that that's a lot of fun. You get some really great images out of stuff like that. And it's it's about the people, too. It's like so, I, you know, I want people to go and meet the people. And it's always good, you know, to kind of have a little to do some research and study on the person or, you know, I do that um, even if I don't have the story in yet in yet, you know, I'll look it up and see that person, try to get an idea of who they are. And if there's images of them, I'll kind of look at different angles and think, okay, I want to try this. But still, when I get there or when they come by or whatever, I'm always kind of like thinking of like, hmm, what could we do? How could, you know, what could be different? And, you know, so it's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And thank you for the times you've shot. I really appreciate it. You know, the, your ideas that you've done. And yeah. I've had a lot of fun shooting for content because you guys, you, you tend to give us a lot of room to interpret uh, the, the subject matter at hand. Because I've done, you know, I've done yeah. some location stuff and, and for you guys and had a lot of fun. The uh, the curated feast image comes to mind where I was had. Uh, yeah. 
uh, where I had her laying on the ground holding a fruit. Um, that was a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, yeah. the tomato. Yeah. And now lately, since we have yeah. a studio here in San Jose, um, it's been really great to work in there and, and be really creative with that stuff. I can build stuff. It's nice yeah. to have room to build stuff because I like to yeah. build stuff too. Yeah. Um, so I've seen a few videos on your Instagram and your website. Do you shoot video very often? I, I do a little bit. I mean, I, have, I haven't shot a lot of it just because um, I'm doing so much in the production of video. It could be pretty time consuming. It's something I've put together different stories and video projects and stuff like that. So it's not beyond my capability. I'm going to start doing a little bit more of that just because of this digital age and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, I have, I, I can do video. Sometimes I, I go back and forth. Sometimes I think like video is easier because you have motion and you have audio and all of that kind of stuff. And you can do all kinds of interesting things with it. And photography is harder because you have one image. But then I kind of, so I go back and forth between which is more difficult. The difficult thing with video is there's just more elements that you have to control and that's more time consuming. And so sometimes time is the most precious thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, is there, do you have any uh, favorite photographers that you follow either contemporary or like old, more old school ones? Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty much, I'm probably like an old school photographer. I mean, there's like, there are newer photographers seen, but I don't really memorize their names as much and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I mean, definitely Irving Penn was one of my main kind of influences and also Richard Avedon um, with Stephen Mizell when he came out, he was doing a lot of photography stuff. Uh, Albert Watson Annie Leibovitz, of course, was kind of like a, you know, that particular time, what she was doing was kind of like cool. Herb Ritz, I really liked Herb Ritz, mm -hmm. kind of what he was doing. And then um, Bruce Weber, when he was doing a lot of stuff like for Vogue and fashion stuff. So it's a little bit of the, it's definitely like the, the folks that were coming out in the 80s. And then definitely like Cecil Beacon, he's like did a lot of the movie stars, Horst, you know, the, these guys that kind of even like the golden age of Hollywood, I really like that because I did a lot with four by five. And so you kind of had to have more of these set scenes. Um, and so I really those guys I just really love. And what I love about them is like their tonal quality. Like I really like a, a kind of a classic tone quality. And I think that a lot of new stuff, you know, digital photographers pump the digital side of it too much. And it kind of brings it away from that kind of tactile, I don't know, warmth or texture. And so um, I gravitate way more towards where well, it was it was photo skills, right? It was like you controlled the light and you controlled the, f the film. You didn't do post-production. You didn't do a lot of smoke and mirrors and layovers and all that, you know, right. all that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff kind of turns me off, actually. I can definitely relate. Uh, is there anything you'd like to share, any projects you're working on? Yeah, I mean, the one thing that I'm kind of excited about is this content issue that's coming out in August is we're trying to feature artists who've created a new body of work during the shelter in place. So I'm pretty excited about that because I'm kind of going through looking at um, the submissions, which there's a lot of good stuff and it's it's actually pretty hard to try to figure out who to do. I mean, that's why I've never done submissions because one, I'm always fearful, oh, nobody's going to submit or the other problem, you get too many submissions and then you have to tell a bunch of people no and I hate doing that. There's a lot of good stuff. And so I think it's going to be a fun issue. It's going to be a little bit different um, than what we've done before. It's going to be a lot heavier on just the artwork. So I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. Other stuff, you know, unfortunately, I don't really have any personal projects that I'm working on because I'm, I do so much that's just related to the magazine. I mean, I wish I did. There are things I have to do, I would love to do, um, but that'll probably have to wait till retirement. <laughs> Is not always the case. Uh, well, thanks a lot, Daniel. I yeah. really appreciate you taking the time. And um, I'm hoping to yeah, be thanks. getting back to work with you guys and content real soon. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate it. Thanks for helping out and having me. Thanks. Light Meter is researched, hosted, and produced by me, Robert Schultze. It's also co-produced by Lauren Baines and recorded in San Jose, California. Did you enjoy this podcast? Let me know your thoughts and send an email to lightmeterpodcast at gmail.com. You can listen to us on anchor.com slash lightmeter. And I'm on Facebook at Lightmeter Podcast, Twitter at Lightmeter PC, YouTube at Lightmeter. I know, sorry, there's a lot of variation on the name, but if you search for Lightmeter and see our podcast logo, that's the one. Thanks for listening, and I hope to see you next time.